I got another new monster truck to play with. How's it going everybody? Greg here with RC Driver and I have the DHK Maximus to show you guys today. I got this in from HRP and uh, this actually isn't a new monster truck. Uh, it's actually, I believe it's kind of new for HRP. They're now the distributor of uh, DHK Hobby. And so they sent us over the Maximus and this is a pretty fun truck because I've driven this truck before. I've actually driven the Optimus buggy from DHK as well and had a lot of fun with the machines. Uh, so I'm excited to try it out again because it's been a while. The one I drove previously, my buddy Tony Phelan over Competition X, uh, he has the truck. Uh, he's the one that let me drive it. So I actually don't have one of these in my collection. So I'm excited to uh, share it with you guys and of course show it to you in action. And uh, you know, I'll probably play with this thing a bunch more, but let's dip into the box here, kind of see what's going on. I do want to talk to you about a couple things on the outside, uh, just cause it helps give you an idea of what this truck's all about. So it appears over here, the, the truck is available in a number of different configurations for uh, the electronics. Uh, our particular kit right here has the basic radio system and it kind of looks like they do offer it with batteries or a computer radio system. I did look on the HRP website and I didn't see these options. I, I just saw this particular option. So, you know, maybe they'll have those in the future if you're interested. If not, not a big deal. What we're going to do, we're going to put some Max Amps batteries in here. That's what we're going to use to power our particular machine. Uh, but it's got a 120 amp speed controller, a uh, high torque servo. Obviously, I just talked to you guys about the radio system. You kind of see the truck over here already. Lots of aluminum stuff, orange aluminum stuff. When's the last time you've seen some orange on something? We've got some cast steering knuckles and uh, just a lot of stuff going on. I think it's really just time to, to rip into this box and we can take a look at what this vehicle is all about. Why does everything have to drop on the floor? Well, that was a workout. But as you can see, this is what you get when you open up a box for a DHK Maximus. Uh, you've got uh, the tires you have to install, uh, but the truck's pretty much built itself. We got a bag of a couple extra things going on here. Here's the radio system. Uh, we've already got decals on the body and stuff. We just got to take this plastic cover off. There, now that looks a lot better. And uh, why don't we just do the usual and we'll start off with uh, the radio system. One of my favorite things to do, check out the radios. And this has a rubber grip. I'm always talking about the grips on the steering wheels. This has a rubber grip. I'm okay with that. Uh, a lot of trim dials back here. We've even got some LED lights, it looks like. We've got steering dual rate, throttle dual rate, steering trim, throttle trim, reversing switches. There's your on off. Even have a charge jack. Got a stubby little antenna here. Um, but this is kind of got a small grip. It's okay for my hand. Just four double A's. You're going to need to supply that. It looks like a pretty decent radio system there. All right, let's see what's in the little plastic bag that you, they give you. Obviously, instruction manual and stuff. But let me just dump this out here. See what's going on. So we've got the wheel wrench. Got to use that to put the wheel nuts on. There's the wheel nuts right there. Got a stubby little maybe antenna. That is a flexible antenna. Look at that. Looks like we've got the speed controller instructions there. Here is your radio user manual. We've got a basic user manual here for the car. And it looks okay. It gives you the idea of how things go together and everything probably gets you up and running. And then we've got some Allen wrenches, of course, as well. And uh, they actually have a, a ball end on it, so that's pretty neat. And now we have the truck itself, and the tires are just falling everywhere. So let's take a look at the tires. It's got a nice soft compound to it. Hopefully it doesn't expand too much uh, under the 4S power. Uh, but pretty cool looking rim there. And it is a 17 millimeter nut, just like uh, pretty much every A-scale vehicle out there. And uh, the body itself, nice looking, you know, generic monster truck looking body, but really well detailed. Got a, you know, bright paint scheme with this orange thing going on. Decals look pretty good. Uh, and then just four body clips, obviously just hold this thing on. So I'll pop this off. And now we can take a look at the truck itself. And this is a pretty beefy looking truck here. A lot of orange aluminum. We've got uh, some oil filled shocks. R look at the size of this cooling fan on here. This is like a house fan. This thing is so huge. So let's start off up front. We got a big bash bumper up front here with kind of like a compression ring up front. So it should take some impacts, kind of a, a skid type of setup here. But what I'm really into are these large bore shocks. They got a nice look to them. Aluminum body, it looks like we've got a pretty thick, probably three millimeter shaft there and uh, adjustable collars so you can adjust the preload on the springs. And those bolt right to this uh, aluminum shock tower. We've got a stubby little body mount that is adjustable. And then we've got the arms here. And these, these seem pretty solid, nice and stiff. 
uh, which is what you want on a scale machine. But look at the size of those drive shafts there. And these are CV style drive shafts. So that is very neat to see. Uh, ball bearings, of course. And then those are cast aluminum steering knuckles. And they, and they are captured for the link out here. Not captured on the inside, but captured outside here. And uh, we've got some wheel hub extenders uh, to give it that width. Uh, so hopefully it handles pretty well. Got a sway bar stock, a gear differential, nice steel out drives. And uh, overall, so far, the front looks pretty good. We've got droop screws in there, of course. And uh, let's move a bit farther back. So we've got a aluminum front brace to kind of actually br aluminum bracing throughout the entire thing. But you can see there's just multiple plates here uh, to brace the vehicle. And we've got the twin steering crank here. It does look like it's a servo saver setup. I don't see the spring, um, but it's definitely got the, the look of one. Let's see if it works here. Yeah, so that's definitely a servo saver setup. Uh, so that'll help damp any shock to the servo. Got this long link to the servo out back because the speed controller is actually sitting in front of the servo over here. So it's a pretty unique setup. You know, usually we see a, a bit of a different configuration on an A-scale machine, but it's got a, a, a nice layout to it. We've got these side guards here on both sides. Here's where your battery packs go over here. We could put two 2S two packs uh, in the vehicle. And, and obviously the speed controller here is 4S compatible. Uh, and it's actually waterproof as well. It's got a cooling fan in there. Here's those on off switch with a little rubber boot. Again, protected from uh, moisture and stuff like that. We've got T plugs on here. Over here we have the motor DHK hobby motor. It's a 2030 KV uh, and it's sensorless. So you don't have to worry about a sensor cable on here, which is just fine for bashing. But again, we've got this huge cooling fan on top of the heatsink motor mount. Uh, and then of course a center differential as well. So that'll help distribute the power uh, throughout the vehicle here looks like we got some nice steel drive shafts in the center of the vehicle uh, Receiver box over here easy to access and I guess that's where that little antenna you got to install the antenna yourself uh, Out back again pretty much what you saw up front is the same out back. So the upper arms are the same uh, Shocks are the same shock towers look exactly the same where it differs is we have a hub out back to support the rear axle instead of the steering and caster block set up like the front so it is a little bit different there but again nice solid suspension arms not a lot of flex there so hopefully this monster truck should handle well uh, as well as being a really good basher uh, but pretty neat setup overall i mean it, it's got a neat look to it you know there, there seems to be a lot of universal parts so if you do go and get some spare parts it could be used you know like upper arms you go switch it front to back uh, so that's always nice to see is, is parts availability. And HRP, they're very good distributors as well. So they should have a lot of parts on hand just in case you need it. Uh, but this is an exciting looking machine. Even gear diff out back feels a little light on the grease, I would say. But uh, we'll have to see how that goes. And, and, and same with the center. Uh, we'll have to see you know if the front tires balloon or something like that but again i remember having a lot of fun with this monster truck and i'm really looking forward to having a lot more fun with it again but i'm going to take it out now and i'm going to let you know what type of bashing this machine can handle
So as I mentioned before, I have some experience driving some of DHK's vehicles. I've driven the Maximus before, the Optimus, and after driving this, I remembered I had a lot of fun with those machines, and I had a great time with this vehicle too. Now this is, you know, it's got this monster truck look to it, but basically this thing is a truggy, and it actually handles really, really well out there. So if you're a follower of the channel, you probably noticed I took it over to my favorite location, Wolcott Hobby. It's a location that we use often here at RC Driver, and uh, they have a motocross track out back, and that's where I took this machine uh, to drive it on the bumps and jumps and berms and stuff that's there. And there's a lot of other stuff to deal with there as well. There's rocks and debris all over the place, but let's run through the usual breakdown of performance of this machine, and we'll start off with the steering, like we always do. And even with these large lug monster truck type tires, the truck actually steers really well. I was impressed with the steering uh, for bashing use. I don't think you need to upgrade the servo. Um, I didn't have any durability issues with the servo. Uh, it works just fine. Off power steering it, in loamy dirt, you know, you got some tight turning. Uh, on power, of course, you're gonna get some push and that's what you get with this as well. The tires do balloon up a little bit and you get a little bit of that dancing effect. If you're trying to steer at high speeds, but uh, you know, just back down on the throttle a little bit and uh, this thing will bite in and turn where you need it to. Next up, let's talk about handling and jumping. And since it's got that truggy-like stance to it, it's got a really uh, long wheelbase to it. Even the width is wide as well. It's got these hub extenders on it and everything. Uh, it handles really, really well. It just soaks up a lot of the bumps and jumps. And, uh, you know, you don't really have to worry about throttling it or anything like that. I mean, the suspension is just working. And what I really like about Truggies, just A-scale vehicles in general, is, you know, if you get in some sort of, like, crash-type situation, uh, you could just go and mash the throttle. The wheels will grow, and it'll just kind of pull itself out of whatever crash, you know. Maybe you'll need a little bit of counter-steering as well. Uh, but for the most part, the top of this truck is, is pretty clean. There's only a few scratches on it. I've only flipped it over a few times. Um, and you know, out there on a motocross type of field, you know, everything in front of you is just unknown. And so, you know, this thing coming through with, with very little scratches on it, um, after a number of battery packs, uh, you know, I was really impressed with how it handled jumping. I mean, this thing just soars. And, uh, you know, one thing is, is these large wheels, they do have a bit of gyroscopic effect to them. So if you launch off of a jump with this thing and you've got your your trigger pin on your radio you know a lot of power will go to the front wheels and it'll flip over backwards for the most part i kept things nice and level what i like to do when i drive is i i like to actually drive the whole day i know there's a lot of people that go out there and they drop a lot of power into their machines and they just go crazy with it and then you see them on a facebook group later saying you broke something well you know when i go out to drive i go out to drive to have fun and get maximum fun out of it uh, so, you know, if you, if you keep your throttle finger under control, you, you know, pay attention to your launch points, your landing points, this thing is just going to be a blast and it'll definitely give you lots of air time. Now on to acceleration. This thing is fast. This thing is really fast. Like I said, that power will transfer the front and you'll be ripping across the yard, ground, wherever you're driving it on. And, uh, you know, it's fast. It'll give you that speed that you need. And I ran some Max Amps batteries and they work really well. They've got a really long run time to them. Uh, well over, I think it was, uh, I think it was about 15 minutes uh, that I got on these packs and I was, you know, ripping on the throttle a lot. And how you use your throttle depends on how much battery life you use. And so during the times I was going full throttle, you know, it cuts down on the battery runtime a little bit. Uh, I also ran some 5,000 milliamp packs. I got about 10 minutes, a little over 10 minutes with those. Again, it depends on how you're running, but I think that had a really good run time to it. Um, and now we're just down to durability. And like I said, just some scratches on the body. Uh, the front bumper is pretty beat up. I hit a lot of rocks with the front bumper. It's a little on the mangled side. It's kind of not sitting right there. Um, but the only thing I want to warn you guys about is the kingpin screws. Um, I lost one. And as you can see, the wheel's just kind of hanging off here. There's a screw that goes into the top turnbuckle here on the upper arm, and it goes down into the steering knuckle. Well, basically that backed out at some point. You know, that, that part right there is under like a lot of stress because not only is it working with the suspension, but now the steering is moving in as well. So it tends to kind of back out those screws. So if you do go and grab one of these machines, I suggest that the first thing you do, head over to the workbench with some new blue Loctite, 
go through the screws on this vehicle. Anywhere where a screw goes into uh, a metal part, go and add some Loctite or, or at least go and double check. Make sure everything's nice and tight in here before you go out and run. That way you just don't lose a screw and you don't cut your day short. But with that said, again, this is a great machine. It's got a great price point to it. Check it out in the description below. And while you're down in the description, you'll find more details out about this machine. And while you're at it, why don't you start clicking on some buttons. Throw the video a like. Please hit the subscribe button, the notifications bell. If you have a question or comment, it goes in that section. And of course, head over to rcdriver.com for some more RC information.